Welcome everyone to our training video. This will be a comprehensive video, uh, mostly on uh, navigating through the software for some of our new partners. A lot of you guys are completely new to our, to our software program, even some of our renewals. Uh, this will also be a good video, especially for those who are new to the tech industry altogether. So bear with me, those who are veterans and, and know a lot of this stuff. I'm going to be going, just navigating through the software, how to navigate through it a little bit more. Uh, the forms tree, things of that nature. I will also be doing the W-2 versus Schedule C income and a couple other different incomes, one dependent versus two dependents, things like that. Uh, our software is still being updated, mostly because the government is shut down right now, so the IRS is shut down. So until the IRS gives us the finalized tax laws, our software cannot update until then. Uh, this is the login screen that each of you guys will see when you, once you log in. I'm going to get started. Now, usually you'll be prompted for extra security to send a, a code to your email or to your text or to your phone. Uh, I've taken that out for the purposes of this of this uh, training video, but I advise most of you guys to keep that on. It's a great extra security measure for you. I'm going to start a tax return. Again, most of this will not be going over the features, but more so just a tax return in its, uh, in, in its entirety. I'm going to hit start new tax return here. I have different profiles set up. You do not have to do this, but for those who want to kind of move quickly through the software, um, uh, the EROs do have access. Those who have their own even have access to create these different profiles. Uh, it's just a way to, if you do not want to continue to add W-2, Schedule C, or education credit forms, it's already there for you. Uh, so that's already done. I'm going to, for the purpose of this video, just do a basic no profile and go down here and add the social security number for this client. You guys can see this, this message each time you log in, uh, nothing to be alarmed for, just hit okay and keep moving. This message right here is, is right now just letting everyone know that we're still waiting on the finalized tax laws for 2018 slash the 2019 tax season. And so that's why the software has not been completely updated yet. I'm going to hit continue. This is the first screen you'll come to. Our software is, is direct input slash interview mode just a little bit. Uh, it's not completely interview mode. You can do that if you, if you like. Uh, to the far left over here, guys, you see how this form tree is collapsed. If you want to uncollapse it or decollapse it, not sure the exact word for that, you press this pin here. And you'll be you'll be able to keep this this way stagnant uh, for the entire tax return. Uh, so you guys see that? Just wanted to show you that. So some so this is be the best way to navigate. Uh, find forms if you don't want to continue uh, moving step by step the way the software does. So this is what you have to fill out first, the filing status. If you're not sure what the filing status is, uh, here over here it says need help determine your filing status. This is the filing status wizard. But as a tax preparer, um, the client should tell you, for the most part, what their filing status is if they need help. Um, the preparer should know usually, or you can use this, this filing status wizard. For the purposes of this, soft, uh, of this training, I'm going to do head of household. And hit continue. Uh, this is where you add the personal information of the tax, uh, the tax client here, the taxpayer. Uh, again, guys, right here, we, our software is broke down into a few different sections. Basic information is over here. Sorry. Uh, the basic information gives you the file status, the personal information page, which you see here, and then the dependents. The federal section is the income and deductions, things like that. So I'm going to get started by putting in a name. I'm going to call this guy Alan Refund. Social's already in there. Tab down, put in the birthday. You put that in by typing it in using your arrow. You're going to type it in 1987. Occupation is not required. Again, if you see this red extras here, that means that section is required to be filled out, okay? 
a mean sex is required to be filled out. Uh, occupation, you do not see a red extras. It's not required, but again, you can put something there um, just to completely fill out this form. Here, guys, when you see this section here, if this does not pertain to your client, do not select it. Okay, if it does not pertain to your client, do not select it. Okay. Uh, also, this first section here, the taxpayer can be claimed as a dependent on someone else's return. This is for those when a parent comes in with their child and they want their child to get the federal withholding. Maybe they have a part time job at Walmart, Kroger, or what have you, and they just want to get the federal withholding, yet the, the taxpayer still wants to claim that child as a CTC or EITC for that child, uh, for their dependent. This is would be when you select this for that de for their dependent. So as if you was doing their dependent tax return, you'll select this button here. Otherwise, just keep moving down here and put in the address. If you have an apartment number, you put it there. If not, we put it in the zip. Once you put it in the zip, uh, the city and state populates for you. For some reason, you need to change that. You can change that here. For some weird reason, it doesn't populate correctly. Put the phone number here that is required. If you are using refund advantage, refund advantage requires two different phone numbers. So put that there and you hit continue. The next they ask you, uh, do you have any dependents or qualifying person to claim on your return? Uh, you hit yes or no there. Also, again, I'm going to decollapse this for you. Uh, if you want to skip this section, you can also just say no. Say someone doesn't have dependent, you can say no. And go to the, the federal section here. You see the federal section, guys, to the left? This is where you add income, deduction, other taxes, payments and estimates, miscellaneous forms. I advise those who are brand new to the software to kind of do a dummy, a practice return, and kind of click in here and see what forms comes up so you can get familiar with where to, how to navigate through the software. You see here on the income section, you see the 1099G, 1099 interest, 1099R, 1099, uh, another 1099G for unemployment, Schedule C, 1099K, Schedule E, D, and F. So it just give you an idea of where everything is. When you hit deductions, uh, these are all the deductions here. You hit enter myself, and it is pull up all the deduction forms here. Adjustments, standard deduction, itemized deductions, credits. You can go through there and kind of get a look at the other taxes. See that? So all these forms, this is a great way to just get familiar with the software, just going through things and kind of kind of clicking through and see what's what. So you can navigate easily once you're which is go time during the actual tax season. Payments and estimates. Here are all the different forms for that. So you guys can go through that. You should know how to fill these forms out. You also can look that up how to fill out all these different forms. Miscellaneous forms. For those who are doing the IPP pin, identity protection pin, when you have to enter that, some of you guys will get rejections. Your clients, a lot of you guys will get clients get rejected for the, I, the I, identity protection pin. This is where you enter that at here. They should get a letter in the mail uh, or sometimes they can call the IRS to get this pin. But if they get rejected for that, don't call us. <laughs> call your client and let them know that they've been rejected for this uh, identity, identification pin. Okay. So the W-7 form for the I-10, for those who do that, that's all here. So that's in the miscellaneous forms under the federal section. I'm going to go back to basic information. Um, we'll add one dependent to get started. And that's how you navigate back to the, the dependent page. It's this way. Another thing, guys, if you want to add a W-2 and you don't feel like going through the federal section, you can type in W-2 here. You can type in schedule and find the schedule C, B, D, and E. Okay, if you're looking for the educational credit, um, you got 8863 form for those who need to file an education credit, those who are trying to get the school credit. Schedule A is where you find home interest, or you also can put in home interest here, and there where you put the, the mortgage interest rates here. So I'm just giving you guys some navigation through the software. Um, you see the IPP pin, if you need to type that in, you can also just type that in with IPP. And it'll come up, you can put it in there. Uh, see if the healthcare will come up for you. All the 1099s, we type in 1099, 1099s will come up for you. So, that's just another way to navigate through the software.
without um, you know having to uh, go go a different route. So again, I'm going to go back to basic information and enter a dependent. I'm going to call this guy Robert. Tab down. You see how when I tab down, the, the name of the taxpayer last name pops up automatically. Now, we know that every tax dependent is doesn't have the same last name as the taxpayer. So be cognizant of this. That this will automate our software just to help you navigate and go through it quickly will automatically populate the last name of the taxpayer. You can always just delete it and put in the correct last name. Another thing is some clients sometimes will just get to typing and not realize that reef that last name is populated. So just want to let you guys know that it does our software does automatically populate the last name of the taxpayer. I'm going down here and put in the birth date. For a client to get EIC for their dependent. Uh, in CTC, the, the dependent must be under the age of 17, meaning they have to be 16 and under. It is also a myth that a lot of you guys may hear that the younger the dependent is, the more money you get. That's absolutely false. It does not matter. From zero to 16, you get the same, the client gets the same amount of CTC and EIC from zero to 16 years old. Okay, so I'm going to put in a social here. The only relationship that you actually get an EIC for is son, daughter, grandchild, niece, nephew, uh, sister, brother, stepchild, stepbrother, stepsister, half brother, half sister. Okay, you get nothing for aunt, uncle, parents, or grandparents. Okay, you get nothing for that foster child. Uh, I think you do as well. I'm just going to put son here. Type in son. Also, in order to get the EIC, they must live with the dependent over half a year. That means seven months or more. If I was to move this to six months or less, you would not get that EIC. Okay? That must be seven months or more. So, as you see here, I'm sorry, I checked this button. As you see here, um, this dependent, the 12 months is already there. So, I'm going to keep moving. If they live with them all year, you just keep, keep moving. If um, the, the person does not have a social security number, I'd see, you can check this box. And created there. I if the dependent was born in 2018, you must select uh, 12 months. So just a note there for you. If this pertains to this dependent, you'll check a box. If it doesn't, you're done. Hit continue. So you see there. I'm sorry, I didn't put in a social. Thought I did. Hit continue. Every time you hit continue, the software automatically saves this page. Once you start a page, you have to complete it in order for it to save. Okay, so I want you guys to know that. So you see how quickly I was able to add a dependent. It's really, really fast. Nothing really much to it. You hit continue. Now, you see we still have zero over here, guys, right? Because you cannot get a refund until you add some type of income. You cannot get a refund or a debt where you owe the IRS uh, until you have some type of income. So we're going to hit continue here. Should take us to the federal section. It gives us the guide me where it walks you through or the enter myself. You also can skip the income if you need to. I'm going to hit enter myself because it's a little bit faster for me. I, I'm going to do a W-2 for the purposes of, uh, of this of this training video. But these are all the different incomes that you can choose from here. Form 1099 miscellaneous will be the, the, the 1099 miscellaneous will allow you guys to use when you do use a miscellaneous. I'm sorry, a 1099. But these are all the different incomes. I'm going to do a W-2. Hit begin. That green, this check mark is already checked for you. It's already selected. Let it be. And go down here. And you need to put in the EIN. Remember, guys, this, the client is bringing you a W-2. They're bringing you a Social Security card, their ID. As a tax preparer, most of it is data entry and kind of knowing, knowing what forms to put the information they're bringing you. So there, you're not making anything up. They're bringing you this information. You're taking this information and putting it in the software, and the software is doing is doing what it needs to do for you. So again, the EIN is found on the W-2. You'll get that W-2. And you'll find that the EIN. You'll put it in. The employer name is found on the W-2. You'll find that section and put it in. The address is already is found on the W-2. You, you'll find it and put it in. As you see, the the, the address is on the, the taxpayer personal information page. is on this, so it's already filled out. If it's different, you can change it. 
I see it populates for you. Then you go down on the W two, you find box one, how much whatever the wages are, fifteen thousand. I'm gonna put fifteen thousand five hundred. Whatever in box two, you'll find that section on the W two, and you put whatever in. I'm gonna put five hundred. As you see, box three, four, five, and six populated all automatically once I filled in box one. Again, you'll look on that W-2. If any of these need to be filled out, if they're filled out on the W-2, you fill it out on, the, on this section as well. All you're doing is looking at the W-2 and filling it out accordingly. Uh, I'm in the state of Tennessee. state of Tennessee does not have state taxes, uh, but the majority of you guys in uh, almost every other state, except for about uh, three more, I think, uh, Texas and Florida and maybe one more, uh, do not have state taxes. Everyone else does, so you should find the state information on that W-2 as well. Okay, you need to add a state, you can also do that as well for those who are somehow taxed in, in two different states on their W-2. I'm going to hit continue, and now we should get a refund. So remember, we have one dependent under the age of 16. Let's see how much the refund we get. So our refund is $5,361 for one dependent. $5,361 for one dependent. Okay, you see that to the right. I'm going to go in here, I'm going to edit. I'm going to take that $500 federal withholdings off. I want to show you guys what happens to the refund was so I take that $500 off. So let's take that $500 off. Go up here. He continues. He saves the page. Let's see the recalculation. Does this fall or does it go up? So we took that off and guess what? It went down $500. So the federal withholding was something that was, uh, was, was attacked on. So this is the EIC and the CTC together. I'm going to show you one of them. Let's go back to the basic information page to the left here. You see that, guys? I'm going to find a dependent. See here? I'm going to edit the dependent. I'm going to make this dependent born in 2001. That means I'm going to make them older than 16 years old. And let's hit continue. Let's see what happens to this number to the right. So they're older than 16 right now. It went down. It went down $1,400. Why did it go down $1,400? Because $1,400 is the refundable amount for the child tax credit. This dependent, this taxpayer no longer is getting the child tax credit. They are, however, getting the EIC. Okay, $3,461. But they're no longer getting the child tax credit because their dependent is over the age of 16 years old. Let's make this dependent back to our age around, you know, our ages of 16 or less. Let's hit continue again. Let's see what happens. Is it 3461? What is it going to happen now? Is it 4861? So that $1,400 is back. Okay, I'm going to show you one other thing. Let's say the dependent, somehow you make the dependent your uncle. Let's see what happens. Have a pretty young uncle, but what, you know, whatever. Let's go in there and see what happens. Zero. You get absolutely nothing. You don't get an EIC or the CTC filing your uncle. Okay, you see that? All right, let's go back in here. Let's change it back to son. So I want to give you guys these different scenarios here. I'm going to type in son. Hit that there. Let's say it's under six months. It's under seven months. Let's hit continue. Save this page. See what happens to this refund. Should be 3461. Why? Let's see. Oh, actually, you lose the whole EIC but keep the CTC. So you are able to get the child tax credit, but you're not able to get the EIC. So that's what that is. That's what that fourteen hundred comes from. So you're not getting the EIC when you're you that person live with the dependent. The dependent live with with the taxpayer less than seven months, but you are getting the CTC. All right, just add it back. Again, just showing you guys different scenarios here. So when your clients come in and try to tell you what's what, you 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 know what the deal is. So add it back. So I'm gonna add the seven months. See what happens. Seven months. Hit continue. Forty-eight sixty-one. They got the EIC and the CTC by just adding one more month. Okay. So that's, those are the laws, those are the rules, okay? All right, and that's it.
That's all we have here. I'm going to show you one other thing. Let's say the dependent is above the age of 16, but they're 17. Let's say they're 17. I put them in 2001. I think that would be. I think that would be 17. But let's say you choose this. This person was over the age of 18 and a full-time student. Okay. Let's click continue. They do not get the CTC, but they do get the EIC. Now, I'm going to show you something else. Let's say we put them at age, just put them in like year two, put them in year 98 to make them 20. And let's take away this button here. Take away this button here. Hit continue. Let's see what happens to the refund. See if it stays the same. Zero. They're 20 years old. They get no EIC. They get no CTC. Let's go back here and let's click that. Let's select that button, that first button there. And hey, they're a college student. They're over the age of 18. They're a full time student. Let's hit continue. At 20 years old, remember they got zero a minute ago. I select that button. Let's see what happens. 3461. So if someone, if some a dependent, if a, a taxpayer comes in and their dependent is over the age of 17, uh, they're I think they're 18 to 24. Uh, or 18 to 23, I'm sorry, and they're a full-time student, if you select that button, they will get EIC, okay? So uh, for those who have uh, children that's still in college. All right, so we're going to put this back at 2001. Sorry, let's put it like 2011. Let's unselect this button here. And we should be back at that, that, 48, that 48 number. So now we got someone under the age of 16. So now we're at 4861, okay? Now, let's go back to the schedules, uh, the W-2. We go to that federal section here, see that here? Hit it. Find the W-2 that we were working on here. And let's do some plan around. So, 15,500, we have 4861. Let's change this to 18,500. Let's see what happens. Forty-eight sixty-one, right? It stayed the same. Okay, guys, let's put it at twenty thousand five hundred. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of different scenarios. Hit continue. That saves the page. That calculates the refund as well. When you can, you save the page. It went down by three hundred bucks, around three hundred bucks. Okay, let's go back in here. Let's make it twenty-four five. Went down by 300 when we took it to 20,000. Let's make it 24.5. See how much it goes down to. Went down some more. 38.71. Let's make them $30,000. Say they made $30,000. Thirty thousand five hundred. It continue. See how much it goes down. Twenty three twelve. Twenty three twelve. So let's take it to twelve thousand five hundred. So we've been taking it up. Let's take it back down. We started at fifteen five. It was forty eight sixty one. Eighteen five. It remained forty eight sixty one. Let's do twelve five. 12,500. Let's see if it see if it gets back to that 4861 range. Hit continue. Saves the page. Calculates the refund for you in real time. 4861. So 12, 5, 15, 5, 18, 5 gave us the same number. Let's go to 10, 5. It's gonna drop a little bit. Let's check it out though. Now you know I'm not the smartest guy, so let's see. I could be wrong there. 
All right, hit continue. Went down by 200. Let's put it at 80, 85. 8,500. Put them at 8,500. See what happens here. Continue. It dropped down. Dropped down pretty dramatically. 3,799. So it's, it's a range, guys. You see that 12,5 to 18,5 was the, the maximum refund that you could get it for EIC. Uh, once you start getting above 20,000, it starts to get lower. Once you start getting 10,000 or lower, it starts to lower. So it's a it's a range of around 10, uh, around 11, 12,000 to 18,000, 18, 19,000, somewhere around there, where you are able to get the maximum EIC, okay? So when people bring in their W-2s and they're like, why my refund is this and last year was that, well, hey, last year you worked part-time, you made about 15,000. This year you worked full-time or you got a raise, you made 30,000, your refund has gone down, okay? Let's put this at a, a maximum refund amount. Let's put it at about 15,500 again. Let's put it at about 15,500 and then let's say that these Again, you're looking at someone's W-2. I'm just using uh, examples. Let's put it at 15.5 and let's say uh, they have a federal hose of about 1,500. Uh, at 15.5, you have to look at the tax bracket, but uh, the federal holders is used, uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's like 10 to 20% of what they should be taxed. But again, you're just looking at the W-2 and putting in what you see. Hit continue. Let's see what this refund goes to. It's probably about 5,000 something, 5,000 or 6,000, something to that degree. Okay, so it's 63.61. Because of this fifteen hundred dollars here um, was added, so that's why you see uh, sixty three sixty one. So this is the refund. Now let's go back and let's add a couple of more dependents. Let's add uh, a second dependent here. I just want the basic information and then go to dependents. Go to edit. I'm sorry, with the edit, let me hit cancel. I mean to add. Apologize for that. Up here, you add a dependent. See how quickly I'm moving through these guys? Uh, let's do Allen. As soon as I hit tab, it, should, it puts the last name of the tax taxpayer in there again. So be, remember that, guys. Put in the birthday. So it's born 2013. Let's put in the social. Son here. Everything else is done. Hit continue. Let's see what we get. We have 6361. Let's see where we are now. Let's see here. I may have put something in wrong. Dependent here. So you see how it jumped up there? I'm going to delete this one, this dependent, and add them again. So we're at $9,166 with two dependents. It's also with $1,500 um, 
dollar federal hose. I'm going to add a third dependent here. You no longer, guys, um, remember, you no longer get a thousand dollars CTC for each dependent anymore. Although the CTC has gone to 2000, only 1400 of that 2000 is refundable. Okay, and when you put in a second dependent, you only get 550 and you get zero CTC for the third dependent. Uh, the last year, previous years, you get a thousand dollars per dependent, so uh, up to three. That's no longer the case. It's no longer the case. It's changed. Pretty quick and easy to add dependents. So three dependents, we got $9,881. Three dependents, we got $9,881, okay? At $15,500, let's go back to the federal income section here. Let's go back to this W-2. Let's take off that $1,500. I want you guys to see something. Let's take that $1,500 off. It's gonna, it should drop fifteen hundred, and that's the the real number without if someone paid in, no taxes into the IRS. Okay, hit continue. Let's see what it drops to. Around eighty three, maybe eighty eight. Let's we'll see. All right, so eighty three, eighty one. Three dependents at fifteen five, and no federal holdings get you eight thousand dollars through eight thousand three hundred eighty one dollars. Now, I want you guys to take a really good look at this. You see, it's $15,500 for W-2 gets you $8,381. That's if you pay, your, your client paid zero taxes in, in federal withholdings. That's if they pay zero taxes in federal withholdings. What I'm about to do right now is get rid of this W-2 all, all together. I'm going to keep the three dependents. I'm going to add a Schedule C with the same exact income. Okay, $5,500, same exact income with uh, three dependents. So we're back at zero. Let's go down here to Schedule C. Hit begin. Uh, you can put the name of the business here. It's not required. You don't see an extra, so it's not required. But we're going to put the name of the business here. If they have an EIN, you can put it here. If you leave it blank, it's just going to use their social. Social. They have an address, you can put it here. If it's not required, so if they don't have all that, it's not required, you don't have to put it. What is required is the description of the business. So you go to click here for a list of business codes, and you find whatever business that they're running, you find the codes here. Okay, you're going to go through all these codes. They're going to pick something. Once you choose something, this automatically gets filled out. But let's say you do not see the code. You do not see it. So you can just type it in. You can just type in wherever you need to type in. There's a barber. You just type it in. You also can use a generic code 99999 if you cannot find the code you're looking for. Okay. Uh, you wouldn't need to do that. It'll be unclassified when you put in 99999. If they are a barber, then you just need to type in barber, beauty shop, or find a code. Uh, it's better to find a code if you can. Okay. Hit continue. Okay, the next section was questions about the operation of your business. Hit begin. These are already pre-filled for you. If they're different for your client, if it's not cash, if it's not uh, cost method, uh, these are the usual cash method and cost method are the usual methods. So that's why they're already selected for you. So you really do not have to do anything on this page unless something is different with your client. If not, just hit continue. And to be honest with you, uh, once you get familiar, you, you probably shouldn't even have to go to this page because there's nothing to fill out there if you are doing the typical client. Okay, so the income is the, the big thing. Hit begin. I'm going to put in 15000 here. This is where you put it at. The gross receipts for sales is where you put it at for a, a Schedule C client. You put the income here. Hit 15500 And hit continue. Uh, you also have people income reported to you on Form W-2 as a statutory employee. That's what you put there. If you're not familiar with a statutory employee, look that up, guys. That's something you need to look up if you have clients who are statutory employees. Let me continue. $15,500, same exact amount as I had on the W-2 with three dependents. Let's see what we get. We only get 
and twenty seven dollars. On top of that, our AGI isn't. It took us down. It's not even fifteen five. It's fourteen four oh five. Why is that? Why is that? It's something called self employment taxes, guys. When you're self employed, you get taxed double. Why? Because if you're an employee, you can pay the employee tax, and the employer is also paying the employer tax. And that tax together equals 15.3%. As a self employed uh, um, client, they get taxed both of those at the same time. Throughout the year, they're, you, they're probably getting cash. They're probably not paying quarterly. If they're not doing that, they're not getting taxed in real time. So when do the IRS get their money? They get their money now. So that $8,000, it is $8,000, but because of the self-employment tax, they're only they're only they're they're getting $6,027 as a federal refund for three dependents, okay? Remember, with one dependent, it was $4,861. Was $4, if I took out two dependents, let's take out two dependents here. Let's go to the basic information section. Let's take two dependents off. Let's take it back to one dependent. If I take out one dependent, let's see what happens. Delete. Let's see what happens to the refund. It may stay the same. Let's see. It went down $700. Take out for second dependent. Let's see what happens. It went down to $2,671. Okay, you guys, you see that? $2,671. Let's go back to that Schedule C. So you get you go back to that schedule C here, see it here. All I did was go to the federal income section, and then found the same schedule C I was working on. We're gonna add some expenses for this client. Let's say they made fifteen thousand five hundred, but they had some expenses. So here are the expenses here: general expenses. Hit begin. You guys can kind of practice with this when you get a chance. Get in here, practice, practice. You know, do some different scenarios, add some different income, some different expenses with a practice return, and see what numbers you get with different dependents. That's why I'm doing this for you. So let's say they spend five hundred dollars in, um, in advertising, maybe in contract la la labor. I'm sorry, they spent three hundred. So that's about eight hundred dollars in expenses. Let's hit continue to see what happens to the refund. And to the AGI because expenses takes away from the AGI. It's going to lower the AGI by 800. So it took this refund up to 100. It lowered the AGI. Okay. Let's go back into the income, the expenses. And let's say down here you got maybe they paid some money in the health insurance. You got mortgage interest they may have paid, legal uh, legal fees. Say they paid 500 in legal fees. Office expenses say it was 1,000. Let's see what happens, okay? So that's 1500 plus it's 800 Those all go against this AGI. It gets taken away from this AGI. So it's going to knock the AGI down pretty significantly. It knocked the AGI, AGI down to 12000 but it took the refund up to 2995 Took the refund up to 2995 uh, so that's like the maximum uh, uh, EIC for self-employed of one dependence around two thousand, probably around three thousand dollars in refund. Okay, so this is one dependent. Remember that, guys. It's one dependent. Okay, so down here you also have car and truck expenses. I'm just going to hit begin and show you what it looks like. You can fill this form out accordingly. Again, you're filling out what the client is telling you, what the client is showing you proof of. So they'll tell you the description of the vehicle here. What uh, date you place your vehicle in service? Okay, it, it, they're going to tell you this, and the software is going to do what they what they do. Okay, business miles. It's going to ask you that. I don't know. I'm just going to put four thousand in there. That's the required part. Hit continue. Just I just filled it out just to give you guys a idea of how to fill it out. Um, but you also can look into that yourself as well. Took the refund up a little bit more. Uh, AGI went down some more as well. So I'm gonna hit uh, I'm gonna delete that. Just wanted to show you what it looked like. Um for, for those expenses of business use of your home, you, I'm just gonna go into it right quick. If you choose to use the simplified method of business use of your home, you will be limited to the maximum square feet allowed for a business, three hundred square feet. So only three hundred square feet can be written off uh, of your home. Uh, of someone that's using their home as a business, and then they just kind of fill this form out. 
Fill it out accordingly. No one needs to ask us how to do this because you should be doing what the client is telling you. Okay, the client should be telling you what to do and you fill this form out accordingly. Okay, awesome. All right, so I'm going to get out of there here. Cancel. That's the 8829 form. All right, so we're done with the Schedule C. I want to show you one extra thing here. Let's add a W-2 back. Let's hit W-2. So let's say this person is a W-2 client. And let's say they um, W-2 Keystone. River Road P eight one two two. So let's say they only let's say they made about seven thousand dollars. Didn't let the IRS take much of two hundred and thirty. All the seven thousand dollars gonna do is get added to this twelve thousand. So they had a job. This is what they made, and they also had a, a side business and more lawn. Who knows? So that gets added, that 19000 Uh You see what happens with the refund. They just went up just a couple bucks. Let's go back in here, and let's say someone is a high earner. Let's say they're a high earner. Let's say they made about $60,000, but they didn't let the IRS take anything out their refund which is which is wow okay <laughs> if they made sixty thousand and it continue let's see what happens they made sixty thousand and you know, from a w2 they made about twelve thousand on their schedule c so they made seventy two thousand dollars and they owe the irs five thousand seven hundred eighty nine dollars okay now they own a business so let's go to their schedule c and what they what they hopefully they were able to do is able to write off expenses so if they made that kind of money. That's what did what did they write off? Maybe they had a building that they was paying for monthly. Let's go down here, and they had rent or lease of equipment, rent or lease of property. Maybe it cost them twelve thousand dollars to. Maybe it was a thousand dollar rent for whatever property they had. They, they was renting out. That's twelve thousand. That's gonna take twelve thousand from their income. It's gonna lower the amount of money that they owe. Okay, so that's seventy two thousand now sixty one thousand. They now only owe three thousand. Okay. Let's go back and do it. Let's say they spent a ton on expenses. It's expensive to get this business off the road, up and going. So they spent about six thousand there. They had some contract labor come in, do about four thousand dollars worth of work. That's like ten thousand there. As it continue, it's going to take away from this number up here. Remember, we still got one dependent. Even one dependent, they owe five thousand dollars. So now it's down to fifty-two thousand, and their federal um, amount due is only eighteen hundred. Still owe. Why? Let's go back to this W two, and let's say they actually paid in to the IRS like they should have sixty thousand dollars. They probably should have been taxed at least probably about eight thousand, eight to ten thousand dollars. I could be wrong there. Let's say they was ta taxed uh, at seven thousand. They let the IRS take seven thousand dollars out their check. Throughout the year, let's hit continue. They're gonna definitely get a refund now. Okay, let's see what the refund is gonna be for one dependent and all those expenses. Five thousand dollar refund at fifty two thousand dollars of AGI. So I'm just giving you guys an idea of how this works. Okay, how this works uh, with the Schedule C and the W two and all those things. How those things work. Okay, remember this still just one dependent. I'm gonna hit continue. Let's go through the return. Let's finish this return up. I'm done with the income. Let's hit continue. Should be getting to, I'm going to uh, skip deductions. And if you don't want to go through all these guys, just go down to uh, here. If you know you don't have deductions or other taxes or payments, just go to health insurance. Just go to this section. If you put in the income you want to put in, you don't have any of these others, go to health insurance and fill that form out. So you have to keep going to continue. Can you? Did you or your family have health insurance? We're going to say yes. Now, I'm going to do no to show you what the penalty will be. Let's go to no. See, this refund is 5189 right? Let's hit continue. Say no. All right. Okay. Verify your household members. Hit continue. Two. You fill this out if you need to. 
uh, any any premium amount paid through a salary reduction. Just, just you feel it out according to your client. So again, you, you look these up. If you're not sure what these are, you can look these up. Otherwise, it continues if it doesn't pertain to your client. Okay, you do not qualify for the exemption based on the, your gross. Did you qualify for an exemption due to circumstances or receive an exemption certificate from the marketplace? Sometimes you can apply for an exemption certificate from the marketplace. If you do not, you hit no. They're trying to give you a way to not have to pay the penalty. Would you like to determine if you qualify for an exemption? You can hit yes and see if you, you qualify. Hit yes. I'm just going to hit yes just for uh, just so you guys can. Then use the question to ask. If you still don't qualify, you just go through that and read through that. But honestly, you have to have something from the IRS to actually figure that out. Okay, so I'm going back. I'm going to hit uh, no here. And you see that we've been, see how that refund has dropped to 4146. Uh, it's dropped to 4146. So I'm going to go back and hit yes and get our refund back up to where it should be. And said we did have a refund, but the penalty is still in effect, guys. Even in 2019, the penalty is still in effect. So I just wanted to show you guys that. So we'll hit yes here. Did have health insurance and continue. Uh, no, we did not get from the marketplace. Hit no, hit continue. Verify these, hit continue. And our refund should go back up after this. Uh, was, you, was your entire household insured all 12 months? We hit yes. So remember that 4146 should go back up to uh, 5189. So you see that, guys? States are still unavailable because the IRS is shut down right now. So once we get the finalized documents for the states, well, uh, it'll it would be right here. See the state section is right on the health insurance section. So if you ever need to skip something and go to the state section, just go to it. Okay, so everything's on this form tree over here. That's how you navigate through the software, guys. If you want to, only section you really cannot skip is the basic information. You need to put in the filing status and the personal information first, and then you can kind of go through and complete other parts of the software um, of of a tax return. Um, uh, it would not in no exact order. So when you continue, it's going to take us to the summary section here. So this right here gives you a summary of that tax of the tax return you just completed. Reasons for no earned income credit gives you the EIC. Your earned income credit is greater than the earned income credit tax credit limits. So we actually don't have earned income credit because this guy made too much money. Okay, so that's why he does is letting you know that right there. Giving you reasons for that right there. So you can go through that and look at that. Um, here, right here, just gives you details. You can hit here and look at the different details. The wages were 60000 Business income loss was 8000 Breaks that down for you. Um, adjusted gross income. So you go through here and look at the details of, of each section. Standard deduction was 18000 for this client. You look at that. Child tax credit was two thousand here. Payments was seven thousand. That was that. That was that seven thousand fair withholdings. The refund here fifty one eighty nine. You also can go look at a ten forty view, which is really cool. I like looking at the ten forty view sometimes. It gives you even more detail. And you get to see it from the ten view. view. See this this client is thirty one years old. They're social. Shows you their dependent, their dependent's age. Shows you that they the dependent did get child tax credit there. Okay, shows you that. Shows you the, the income. This W-2 here. You can actually click this and go directly to the W-2. So you see that? I went directly to the W-2. I'm going to go back, the back button here. Take me back to the summary page. And you go back to the 1040 view. Just get a, a look at uh, everything from that from that view. So, and you can go to the standard deduction here, the 8,000, they'll, they'll take you to the Schedule C, and just look at how this form looks, how everything is broken down for you. Here's how everything is broken down, okay? Um, 
see if it shows you looking for the self-employment tax on here. I'm probably going past it, but here's a W-2. You can go to page two and three. Now I'm going to hit continue and go to the next page. You also can view and print from this page as well. Now, this is one of the most important forms on here, the due diligence page. The due diligence, the 8867. This is what the IRS uses to audit. If they ever come in, knock on your door and say, give me eight, five, five files, they usually ask for five files. They start auditing based off the due diligence checklist that you filled out for each client. The 8867 has to be filled out for every client. If it's not, you will get audited for it. It is an audit item. Now, our software won't allow you not to complete it. So that's one good thing there. But you also have to complete it accurately. They are asking a lot of questions that and they're asking they're very redundant in these questions because they try to get they try and catch you on the okie doke, okay? And these is really for anyone who's claiming EIC, CTC, or the American uh, Opportunity uh, Act. Okay, so that's that's the educational credit. Okay, so that's what this form has to be filled out for each client that gets one of those three credits. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this. It's very important you guys list, listen to this and go through this with me. Was the taxpayer a non-resident alien for any part of the year? I'm say no. Is the taxpayer a qualifying child of another person? I'm say no. Did you complete the return based on information for the tax year 2018 provided by the taxpayer or reasonably obtained by you? Yes, we did. Did you interview the taxpayer, ask adequate questions, and document the taxpayer's responses to determine that that taxpayer is eligible? What the IRS, yes, we did. What the IRS wants you to do is interview your clients. They don't want you just to take the client's word for anything. They want you to interview interview them. They want you to document what, what those questions that you ask your clients are, what their answers are. That's what they want from you. They don't want someone to come in to say, hey, this is my daughter, and you're not question them or ask them where's proof of that. Okay, that's the biggest thing with the IRS right now. They're cracking down on that. Did you review the adequate information to determine that the taxpayer is eligible to claim the credits and or HOA filing status and in what amount? Yes, we did. Did any information provided by the taxpayer or third party reasonably known to you in connection with preparing the tax the return is to um, appear to be incorrect, incomplete or inconsistent? No, it did not. Did you satisfy the record retention requirements? You can read through there what the record retention requirements are. That is keeping copies of all documents provided by the taxpayer. You got to have copies, guys. You got to, okay? That is important. The thicker the envelope is when they come in, the folder is, the better. The thinner that folder is, when you just grab it, just a couple of documents, the, the worse, okay? All right, so what do we use? I'm going to say Social Security card. And you can look up the 8867, what is needed, what they're looking for. You can look that up um, for yourself. It's on iris.gov. You can look up what is what you need to rely on, what documents you need to rely on, okay? I'm going to put Social Security card. You have to fill something in there or you cannot go further. Did you ask the taxpayer whether he or she could provide documentation to substantiate eligibility for an amount of credits? Okay. Yes, we did. Did you ask the taxpayer if any credits were disallowed last year? Yes, I did. Were any questions disallowed uh, in the previous year? Or, uh, disallowed or reduced? I'm going to say no here, but if the answer is yes, you will have to fill out an 8862 form. So keep that in mind. Okay. Have you determined the taxpayer is in fact eligible to claim EIC? Yes, we have. I'm going to go back up here and answer this question. Did you ask adequate questions to prepare a complete and correct t uh, 1040 Schedule C? Yes, because we have a Schedule C form, so they asked that question as well. Was the taxpayer a main home in the United States for more than half the year? Yes. Is the taxpayer eligible to be claimed as a dependent on any by uh, federal income tax? No. Does the child reside with the taxpayer who is claiming the CTC? Yes. Did you explain to the taxpayer that he or she may not claim the CTC if the taxpayer has not lived with the child for over half the year? Yes, I talked to you guys about that earlier in the video. 
So they're basically asking the same questions. Did you explain the taxpayer the rules about claiming CTC for a child of a divorce or separated parents? Yes. Okay. So explain and ask that question. Here are the household questions. Had you determined that the taxpayer was married or considered unmarried on the last day of the tax year? Yes. Do you serve out all the answers on Form A this are to be to the best of your knowledge true and correct? Yes. Okay, out here, you have complied. You have complied with all due diligence requirements with respect to the credits and or HOA filing status uh, claim. If you did all of these things here, so read through this, guys. Complete the Form A sixty seven. Submit Form A sixty seven in the manner required. Interview the taxpayer. Ask adequate questions. Document the taxpayer responses on the return or in notes. You can document these questions within the uh, software as well. I a copy of the form or, or or do it in notes. Keep all five. Keep all five of the following records for three years. Okay, a copy of the form eighty six seven. You guys can go through this um, when you get the opportunity. But right here, it's a five hundred twenty dollar penalty for each credit for which you have failed to comply. The, you see that five hundred twenty dollars there, and they are not planned about that. So I'm going to hit continue. That's why I said this form is one of the most important forms. As a taxpayer, it is your duty to make sure you complete an accurate um, and complete tax return. Go back in here. Let's see what I answered correctly. Said so I didn't answer something correctly. This is the page where you will add in your prep fees. This is also the page where, uh, right now, you do not see it, but this is where you'll choose your bank uh, for our partners, those who are a part of partnership, none even holders. Your bank will be refund advantage. You also see the options for the advances right here. They should be in, in this area here. You see the options for the advances uh, to choose the pre-act advance or the in-season advance. And also the, the bank product that you're choosing as well. So you will not see that right now because uh, the banking information hasn't been updated. But once it, it does, you will see that. You also have additional forms that you have to complete. We'll make a separate video when that is ready to go. Right now, they're going to put uh, direct deposit. Let's put some information there. Um, you, you don't have to click that. Hit next. Next here, you can put the uh, the prep your prep fees here. Now four fifty is here because I I did an automatic to where four fifty is is this the minimum prep fee, so you don't have to worry about that. But four fifty is what I put here. Uh, for for those who want to charge an electronic filing fee. I, there's no really no need to do that. All the all you do is when you do that, it's just gonna get added to this 450. So, it's just, so now it'll be 550. It just get added to whatever you're doing. For those who are looking at using audit uh, audit protection, you choose this here. It's 89.99 um, uh, for the partners. Remember, guys, if you are a partner with us, uh, the partners, not the EROs, uh, you get twenty five dollars for for every funded person that you put the audit protection on, you get $25. For those who want to put, uh, the, if your clients want to securely ID, uh, that's an extra additional $29.99 if you choose to put that on their return. It gets added to the total there, as you see. I'm going to take that off. Also, remember, when you guys are doing the advances, you, the tax preparer, are getting charged for the advance. Okay? You guys are getting charged for the advance, not the taxpayer. So keep that in mind. Okay? I'm going to take this $100 off here, too. So there's really no need to do that.
I'm going to take that out because it's saying it's required. It's, it's not required. Um, so if you're trying to get auto protection, you'll just click that there. If you don't want it, you're, you're un unselected. It asks for, it asks for um, an email address. You can put in uh, whatever. The taxpayer pin, usually we just use the last four digits of the um, the social of that client. That's what the taxpayer pin, you, you use what you want. The ERO pin is, is wherever you make up your ERO for the partners. Whatever pin is there, keep that there. I'm going to hit next. Because I chose direct deposit, it's telling me to put in the banking information, the account, routing number, and all that information. I'm going to go back up here, and because I don't have all that information, I'll go back to the return type and just put check or something like that so that I, I'm not asked that question. This is all I did. I just went back up and changed that. I'll go back to the tax preparation section, hit next again. It's just giving an, an information here, the third party information, if you want to fill that out. Hit next again. We added these questions for our partners. Did you verify client information? Yes. Did you verify the identification? Yes. You do not have to have these questions here. We added it uh, for our partners as an extra security measure. You hit save. Okay, one is not a bank product, should collect fees. This is, let us know this is not a bank product, and this is not right now because there's no bank products there. Um, also, we can't e-file, so it's like e-file is blocked. So that's basically would be the end of the return. You can print it here. You can email it directly uh, to your clients. Uh, you can, can print one copy, two copies, 1040 only, state only, 8879, which would be the um, electronic filing document signature, or you can just uh, print out all the signature documents, everything that was going to have a signature. Okay, so I'm going to do that. That's one of my the ones I, I prefer because all the signature documents, all the legal documents will be printed out uh, for your client and for yourself. Okay, that's the preparer's name. It says demo right. The client was signed right here. Taxpayer signature, you hit sign. And they can go with the mouse that's on your computer and sign like that. See that? Hit save signature. Just letting us know it's not a bank product again. And um, it's giving us all this information. Let us know what the refund is going to be for this client. You want to click, is it complete? Hit complete there. Let us know the total preparation fee. Now, for our, uh, for our partners, you will mark it as completed. That let us know to transmit it for you. Um, and if you are ERO, you just do what you do what you want. You transmit it yourself if you want to. Uh, save and exit return. So right now we can't do any transmitting. Uh, so we're basically done. We save and exit this return. I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. Learned a lot. I know you may have some questions about it, but for the most part, it's just navigating through the software, showing you guys different things to do. I will go up here and um, see here. It's save and exit return, and we're done. Thank you so much.